week is going to be a week of truly bringing in your shapes. You know, I mean, you are going to gather in the spoil in the name of Jesus. You may be seated just briefly and would want to look at God's word. And I want to teach about the invisible world around us. And, you know, we've been talking about... Um, how to appropriate God's word in a sense, you know, and we want to talk about the invisible, the invisible world around us. On, on Wednesday, I began to talk about the fact that the Bible said in the book of Matthew chapter 22, the thing from verse 37, you know, I mean, and that is what I call, you know, or that's what I mean, a commandment that everyone needs to get to understand. And God divided this, this commandment into two, and we looked at it from three different perspectives. He says, Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And we, 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 we you know, talked about how that, you know, the Sadducees, the, the Pharisees, and the rest of them, you know, they came to trap him, to tempt him, to see how they could trap Jesus. And so they were bringing questions and telling him things, you know, and accumulated in this, you know, when they asked him which one is the greatest commandment. In other words, the best commandment and all that. And he said to them, Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And so dividing your operation and relationship in this world, like we have, we, we've talked about it, the different kinds of relationship that you would have, you have a relationship with God, you have a relationship with man, and you have a relationship, you should have a relationship with yourself. And so, you know, look at it from this particular scripture in Matthew 22. It says, Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And the next verse says, This is the first and the great commandment. It is the first and the great commandment, loving God. In other words, your spiritual investment is the most important in your life. And a lot of us, that spiritual capital, we don't have it. We don't invest enough in ourselves. You know, not understanding the, of the spirit. And the most important, he said, this is, this is the first and the great commandment that you build up your spiritual capital. You know, for any business you want to do, you need capital. Whether you like it or not, you need capital. You know, and so God says, this is the force that you should build up. And the Bible says it clearly. It says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. In other words, your, your, your material prosperity, you know, should go hand in hand with your spiritual prosperity. You shouldn't prosper more materially more than you prosper spiritually. That's what scripture is saying. Because it will bring trouble to you. You know, and that's why you see some people pride had entered into them because they have so much money. Like the young ruler that came to him, he had prospered so much, you know. I mean, materially, but he had not prospered spiritually, he had issues. And Ecclesiastes 2.26 says, it clearly says, God gives to the man that is good in his sight wisdom, knowledge, and joy. And to the sinner, he gives, he gives the travail to gather up, to heap up, that he will give to the man that is good in his sight. So God's priority is for you to prosper first spiritually, before you begin to prosper materially. If, you're, if a man prospers spiritually, in other words, the fruit of the Spirit is at work. You know, he abides with God's word. Money cannot rule him. You know, because one thing about money, when money comes into the life of a man, money wants to control. Material prosperity controls. If you are not in charge, it will be in charge. So God, does not, God wants you to be, charged, be in charge at all times. And so he talked about, he says, you know, I mean, you love the Lord thy God. In other words, your priority should be your spiritual investment, your spiritual capital. And afterward, he says, you know, he talked about your social capital or social investment. He says, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So loving your neighbor as yourself. And I know I've explained it, that, you know, a new commandment has been given. It says we should love one another as he has loved us. But what he's saying, there's that social capital. A lot of people, you see, there's some, so many spiritual people that amount to nothing, you know, materially or physically. Why? Because they don't know how to relate. They don't know how to keep relationship. And God expects that you should know how to keep relationship. It doesn't matter who it is. You should be able to relate with everybody. You know, Jesus Christ, I mean, in my, in, you know, according to scripture, and I, I, I believe so much that he was the most spiritual man that ever walked the face of the earth. 
You know, where they saw him, he mingled with all sorts. In short, people saw him and said he was a wine bibler. You know, some saw him and said he was a gluten. They, they, he's a friend of sinners, you know. And because he was spiritual, he was matured spiritually, he was able to relate with every kind of person. You know, if you think that you're spiritual and you are unable to relate with people, you need to begin to check it. You need to begin to check it. And so we talked about a social, you know, capital or social investment, and I talked about, uh, uh, talked about uh, self-investment, investing in yourself. You need to listen to the message again anyway. You know, invest in yourself. Yes, the spiritual, the social, and the self-investment. A lot of us have not invested in ourselves. We have not invested. You are not different from the person you were 10 years ago. There's nothing new that has been added to you. You have not invested in yourself. You have not grown. You have not developed yourself. You know, you need to, to, to develop yourself physically. Develop yourself mentally. We want to talk about self-development and spiritually. Some people are, when you see them, they are, they are, they are physical giants. But mentally, zero. They are dwarfs. The same way some people, they are mental giant, physical giant, spiritual, non-existent, dwarf. You know, you see a full-grown man with six-pack. Something happened at night. He said, mommy, oh, mommy, oh, you know. <laughs> you know, he's a dwarf spiritually. Something is happening, to you. he's holding on to his wife. Instead of the other way around, you don't know, shaking. You know, you can't take charge. And there, there are people like that, and most people are like, are like that. And that's not how God wants to be. You know, so we, we talked about it. So I, I want to bring us today to a place where we understand a little bit about the invisible world around us. Many of us, you know what the devil does not want us to know is to understand the invisible world. And that's the reason why a lot of us as believers, we have issues. You know, the problem with most of us as believers is not that, you know, God is not resident in us. He is resident in us, but he is not president in us. I don't know if you got that. He is resident, he's in you, but he is not the president of your life. He's resident in you. He dwells in you. It's not that some people deny him. You know, that's not a problem. So a lot of us don't deny him as God. But a lot of us have dethroned him as God. And the truth is because we do not see him physically, we do not know. Many of us fear the government. We fear the devil more than we fear God. Because you don't know he's been dethroned. He does not have his rightful place in your life. And that's the reason why, you know, when we read, I mean, in, from Matthew 22, that thou shalt love the Lord thy God. In other words, he's meant to be president. He is, he is meant to, to have preeminence. He is meant to be priority in your life. But he's not. He's there, yes. You know, God can be there and things can happen to you. Why? Because you've not given him that opportunity to be in charge. He can be there, but he's not in charge, so things would happen. So many of us don't understand that realm of the invisible. You know, and the, the problem, the, the truth is the devil. The Bible talked about how that the, the, the God of this world had blinded the eyes of people so that they do not see this invisible realm. They do not understand this invisible realm. And a lot of us are blinded to this reality. And things are happening, but you don't know the reason why they're happening. And science is evidence-based. They want to foresee before they believe. And most of the time, you know, before you see, you would have been gone if you do not understand this reality. And that's the reality that God wants us to understand as his people. Just imagine if you, today Job he was in our midst and everything that happened to Job happened. And many of us would have said, oh, it was just coincidental. Oh, it was probably, they were just probably in a bad place, you know, or the wrong place at the wrong time. And, you know, if you don't understand the realm, this invisible realm, you probably won't understand the operations of God or the operation in that realm. You will see everything and you think it's coincidental. You think it just happened. 
You think it just happened. But no, that's not how it is. But when you understand, you know, that there was an orchestration before everything happened. You, you, read, you read it and you begin to see from verse 13. And you begin to see the things happen. You see before verse 13, the orchestration, the conversation that happened. Job chapter 1 from verse 13, if you put it up there, you begin to see. I, I'm taking you gradually to understand, you know, what we're going to. Because God created two worlds. He created the visible and he created the invisible. And until you understand these two worlds, you probably won't be able to get you know, or, or succeed in this world. It says, and there was a day. But before this day, there was a conversation. So all that we see is the day that the thing happened. Not the day before it. Not the day. You know, there's some things that are settled long ago before they happen. You just see them happening and you just think it's coincidental. And he just wanted to cross the road and the car just ate him. Oh, you see it as an accident, coincidental. But the Bible says, and there was a day when a son... Well, let, let's go back to verse 12 and see, you know, I don't want, to read, read, want us to read from too far. And the Lord said unto Satan, all that he had is in thy, hand, in thy power, only upon himself put not for thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Boom. And it didn't happen that day that he went from the presence of the Lord. The Bible says, and there was a day that day that changes so many things in the lives of some people. That day that just happens, and they, I mean everything happens. Before this day, you need to be in charge and in control. You need to engage, to know how to engage the invisible. The Bible says, and there was a day when his sons and his daughter were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And the next thing, calamity happened. It looks like it's coincidence. And you see all these things, they happen, and they're happening in your life. And a lot of people don't know. In 1 Samuel 21, you know, 1 Samuel 21 from verse 1, the Bible says there was a famine. Now, we all know that famine happened because of weather condition or one thing or the other, you know. But this time, there was a famine. 1 Samuel 21 verse 1, let's, let's read it. We'll, 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 we'll look. I'm just trying to, just to, 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 to set the pace and give you a foundation. It says, then came David to, is it not 22, I, I think, 1 Samuel 22, from verse 1. If I'm, or 2 Samuel 21. Yeah, 2 Samuel 21, I, I, I think. But Bible talked about a famine. I want, want us to read it. That's where, you know, 2 Samuel 21, I guess. Yes, it says, then there was a famine in the days of David. Three years, year after year. And David inquired of the law. And the Lord answer, it is for Saul and for his body house. You know, if it's today, you would have thought it was because there was some weather condition, there's something that is happening, that there was a famine. If you do not understand the realm of the invisible, you would not know that it was orchestrated. You would not know that it was orchestrated. But the Bible says this was orchestrated because of what Saul did. And so that's what I'm taking you to. And when you read scriptures, you see a lot of things that happen. Some you think is an accident. Because most of the time, they don't give you the full picture. You know, we read about David. He just threw a stone, and the stone hit the head of uh, Goliath, and Goliath fell. You know, that's all that scripture wants us to see. He didn't show us the other side of things. If God had shown you the other side of things, you would discover that it was not just the stone that he threw that brought Goliath. I still say it, and I say it every time. You know, because they've thrown stone. I mean, they've eaten my every stone, and... I bled, I went to the hospital, and all that. I didn't die. And it was a big one, you know? And so I'm looking at the giant like, like you know, a lot of people, you know, he probably might not have even done anything to some people. But because God was in it, I am 100% sure that God was the one that directed that stone. Because every other part of Goliath was covered. So a lot of us don't understand spiritual orchestration, and things happen. In some marriages, there are some things that are happening that some of us don't know. If you don't know how to inquire like David inquired of the Lord, you won't know the reason why that is happening. You just see some two people that have sworn to themselves, that will love ourselves till death do us part. They automatically one day become enemies. They can't even look at themselves. They can't see themselves. They don't want to see themselves. 
And some of us just take it casually and, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, superficially and think that's just it. Yeah, it's just coincidence. Short pastor is just talking. Uh, it might just be a coincidence. Now, that, that's what I want us to see, that, that, that realm. And I'm going to read scripture to you. The Bible says in the book of Colossians 1, 15 to 16, it says, I'll read from verse 15. It said, in talking about Jesus, it said, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. It says, for by him were all things created. So the things that are created, it says, they are in heaven and that are in earth. Visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And the next verse says, it says, he is before all things, and by him all things hold together consist. So there are visible things, and there are invisible things. But the devil has made it in such a way that man focuses only on visible things. We, it's the only the things we see that matters. In whatever it is we want to do, our judgment and everything is all about the visible, the things that we can see. Now we don't give a place to the things that cannot be seen. And until you begin to learn how to handle things that way, because even God, that's the way he, he operates. The Bible says in, in the book of Romans, chapter 4, verse 17, it says, as it is written, it's talking about God. It says, I've made thee a father of many nations. And that's how God calls. That's how God operates. You know, he, because he understood. He, he lives in the realm of the invisible. He says, I have made thee. You know, and before when he said this, this man was not the father of anybody, of anything. But God says, I have the authority of the person that is saying it. He says, I have made thee. A father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God who quickened the dead and called it those things which be not as though they were. And listen, faith, you know, when we talk about faith here, because I know some people, they, 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 they mistake this faith of God. You know, I mean, I don't know what I want to call what they do. Let's just call it presumptuous faith. Uh, you know, you see someone that is shaking on the bed and truly, truly, seriously shaking and say, I'm not the one that is sick, it's the devil. I'm not, no, that's not what we're saying. I mean, like, I mean, some people are not just factual, you know, about, they don't even understand what they're doing because they have told them, just say, just positive confession. And no, 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 this is not positive confession. It's not the same thing as positive confession. It's not the same thing at all. The Bible says this faith, it calls those things that be. Listen, he does not name them. For instance, you know, if, you know, I think I do this most of the time. If I'm upstairs, you know, and I want to get my wife to, do, to show my wife something, I'll just call her downstairs, babes, come and see. I'm calling her because I know she's there. So I'm calling those things, you know. He says, for God who quickened the and call it those things which be not as though they were. I'm calling, I'm call, you know, I can't see it, but I know in my spirit that she's there. And I'm calling it. And let me explain to you whether it is your health, whether it is your finances. Because God already has said it is there. So I'm calling it. Now, it is not, what I'm doing is I'm not calling those things that are as though they are not. Someone is sick, not feeling fine, and they're saying, no, I'm not the one sick, it's the devil. No, no, that's not what it is. You know? I mean, you need to change it. You need to call those things that be. What is it that is? The Bible says he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace is upon him. And by his stripes, we are made whole. So we have been made whole. So I call that wholeness. I call, because that one, it is. So I'm not denying, faith does not deny the fact. Faith changes the fact. You might feel sick in your body. It's a fact. Your faith is there to change it. Whatever it is, you see it. 
Then you use your faith. Look at what the provision of God was. We're going to get it just quickly. But God knows how to call things. He knows it's there. The health is there. He knows the wealth is there. He knows he calls them. Even though physically, when I'm calling my wife, she is not in the same room, the same space. I cannot see her. But I know she's downstairs somewhere. I don't know if you're getting it. She's somewhere. And it, until you begin to understand the word of God and understand how to operate and engage this realm of the invisible, you probably won't get so much out of it. That realm is, is, is what governs everything that happens here. In the, there's nothing that you see physically that was not foreseen in the realm of the invisible. Nothing before this place was created. The architect had seen it. They had built it. They had drawn the plan. They seen the house. Okay, this is how it should be. And we'll put this pillar because we need, in short, I mean, you know, I mean, the, the, the civil engineers that are here probably will tell you more. They know the strength of every pillar. I mean, how much this, this ground can take, how much it cannot take, how far they should build the foundation. They have seen it. They have tested it before they put it up. There is nothing that is seen, that is seen, that did not come from what is unseen. Hebrews 11, from verse 1, let's, let's, let's read. I, I'm taking you gradually somewhere so that you can understand that, they, see, there's a realm. And don't joke. A lot of people have joked with us that realm. A lot of people have undermined that realm of the invisible. And that's what the devil, the devil, you know, the devil is okay if you don't believe he is there. The devil is okay, you know, I mean, if you just believe, I mean, like, it's a meat. And that's the reason why they do Halloween and the rest of them. They say, it's not true, you know. But you can see the end of the devil in all of the Halloween and the rest of them that they do. You know, and they are trying to force it on us. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things opt for, the evidence of things not seen. There's, there are things that are called not seen. In other words, unseen realities. You know, in this life, you have the seen realities and the unseen realities. The seen realities, we all, I can see everybody in this place. Oh, yes, I know Dr. Les is in church because he's here. I can see him. That's the seen reality. But you know, there's a realm of the unseen. The Bible says, for where two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is in the midst of them. Do you know that the Godhead is here with us? But you can't see them. It's an unseen reality. It's an unseen reality. If you've ever seen witchcraft operating, you know, you, you, you would understand how this thing works. I mean, I was reading about um, some, some things that happened some few years back in, 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 in Nigeria, in some one state in Nigeria, how someone took egg and threw it at a building, and the building caught fire. And you'd be wondering, what, is that a bomb or whatever? Uh, some spiritual bomb-making device. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, there's some things. I mean, you, you probably would have seen I've seen people with sharp knife cutting themselves. I don't know if you've seen them. Put it in their eyes and nothing happened. I mean, if you've seen that, oh, you think it's just, you know, they, they, they are engaging some spiritual forces of things that you cannot see. And as, be as believers, until we begin to operate from that realm of the unseen, we will not get so much in the realm of the sin. If you do not win in that realm, you will never win in this realm. If you cannot see it in that realm, you cannot see it in this realm. You know, there's some people that just say, I can't just, they can't see it. That's when they are teaching you, they expect you to see. That's why when you see what they are saying, you say, oh, I see. That's understanding. That's understanding. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. It says, by for by it, by faith, the elders obtained a good report. In verse 3, that's what we're going to. It says, through faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So, the things that you see were not made from things that are seen. That's what they're saying. Everything you see is made from things that are not seen. 
So if you want to change a thing, what you need to do is to first see it in the realm of the invisible. Change it in the realm of the invisible. And you'll be able to change it in the realm of the visible. If you're not able to change it in the realm of the invisible, you probably will definitely won't have it in the realm of the visible. And a lot of us who have not learned to engage and fight this way from the realm of the vis visible or invisible. And that's what God wants us to do every time. To learn to engage that realm. When that realm is engaged, then this one is a walkover. He says we understand. And that's how God, that's how God builds. You must understand this, this, this the sin and the unseen. He says that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So if you want to change things that you see that you don't like, you don't wait. A lot of us wait for the things that we can see to change the things that we cannot see. You know, you need to begin to learn how to wait to look for the things that if you can see it in your spirit eyes, you can see it in the word of God, then you can change it physically. You can change it physically. Praise the Lord. You can, you, you can change it physically. You know, I like how 1 Corinthians 1 from verse 26 put it, you know, just to run through quickly. And I take you to where I want to take you to, to understanding that realm of the invisible. And how to engage it. He says, for you see your calling, brethren, out of not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. He says, but God had chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. God had chosen the weak things of this world to confound the things which are mighty. He says, and base things of the world and things which are despised at God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, things that are not, things that are not visible, to bring to naught things that are, you know, if, 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 you know, you were in Salford some 10 years ago, and they bring you back to this area of Salford, you will see, you know, you begin to see some things that are visible, that were invisible those days, they have become visible. Some houses, some structures in the minds of some people that have become a reality. What you never saw before, it has become. So, you know, to, 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 to I mean, direct your future aright and to fill your future with the kind of things you want, you need to understand this principle. How to fill your future, the kind of things that you can see in your eyes, though not available now, you can begin to walk and speak them into reality until they become a reality in your life. Until they become a reality in your life. And I'll take us quickly to the story of Elijah. Quickly. Take you quickly to the story of Elijah. And when you read the story in the book of 1 Kings 18, I think from a study, um, and, and the prophet of Baal, you know, he had gone, in chapter 17, he had gone to, to, to Ahab and told him what God wanted him to do. And from Ahab, he went to the brook where he was fed by raven. From there, you know, to Zidon where he was fed by a widow. You know, and God said, okay, it's time for you to, you know, show yourself to Ahab. And he went to show himself to Ahab and the meds. And he said, okay, you know, we have been in this, we have been talking and discussing about this issue. Who is God? Who is not God? For too long. He says, let's decide today who God is. Get the prophets of Baal. Let them come. Let's meet on Mount Carmel. And, you know, let them call on their God and I will call on my God. And they did. And they brought two bullocks and they put, you know, they had their own. He had his own. They put it on the altar. They made sacrifices. They were crying and shouting. And nothing happened. Because what they were doing, they were engaging in this realm of the invisible. To make something happen in the visible. And so they engage all the system, all the things they know how to do, cut themselves. And to the extent that Elijah started mocking them, and from verse 30, it was his time. I mean, a smart man, he understood three principles on making, you know, I mean, engaging the invisible. And the first, from verse 30, you know, three principles, engaging and bringing to reality whatever it is for you to get the performance of God. There are some things that you need to do. See, there is the promises. 
from Scripture, there are the principles in Scripture, and then you see the performance. And the Bible says from verse 30, let's go, let's, let's, let's read it. 1 King 18 from verse 30. Being clear. Okay, it says, And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. You know, this is, if, if there is, um, you know, some things we call Ojuru, he knew how to do it because he knew the word of God. He didn't have to like, you know, a lot of us, because we don't know God, and that's why the Bible talked about the children of Israel. It says they knew the act of God. They only know the miracles of God. They didn't know the ways of God. This guy knew the word of God. He knew that when you engage the word of God right, with the principles of his word, you get a result. And so the first thing that he did was to repair the altar. There was no way it would happen when the altar is not repaired. And that's why we talked about, the, the Bible says, this is the first and great commandment. We talk about these principles, the priority, how you engage God. You need to put the big things first. You know, we, we, I, I talked about this a long time ago. A man was given a jar, given sand, water, uh, and, 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 and stones and the rest of them to fill the, the, um, the jar up. You know, and putting sand first. He had only sand. He filled with sand. He couldn't put water. He couldn't put stone. You know why? Because he had not gotten the right way, the priority. But when he was taught right, he understood that first you put in the stones. Then the small, small bricks. Then, you know, the sand before you put the water. When you put, it looked like the stones were big. They would fill up the place. When you put God in first, you discover that there's still space for so many other things. But when you put so many other things first, you discover that there is no space for God. And so he understood the priority and the way it should go. And he checked the word of God. It says, And Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. You see, he knew the word of God. You know, and he was repairing the altar according to the word of God. And with the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. Not just, you know, knowing the word of God. Everything he did was in the name of the Lord. The Bible says, I mean, whatever you do, whether in words or in deed, let it be, you know, in the name of God. You know, and he did it in the name of God. And he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in, you see, everything. There was an order. When you read scripture, you discover the order of sacrifice. He put it and cut the bullock in pieces in order and laid him on the wood and said, fill four barrels with water and pour it on the bond sacrifice and on the wood. First, he understood the promise of God because God says, if you do it this way, you will get this result. And so he started by doing it. And the first thing that a lot of us need to know is, you know, the conditions of our hearts. That's what God is looking for. If you don't get it right from the heart, the altars of your heart are not repaired. You cannot get the miracles that you're looking for. So he first did all this. And said, you know, after he had done that, that he had put those things in place, he knew. He says, put water. Water is the greatest enemy of fire. He knew that there's no way that there can be fire here when there is water. But because he had put those principles in place, he knew there's no amount of water you pour that will stop this principle from working if it does it right. If you engage the world right, it doesn't matter what circumstance or situation comes against you, they can't stop you. He said, pour water. And they poured water. They poured water. He knew that they can't stop him. They can't stop this from happening because he had done the right thing. And not just, you know, knowing the promises of God. He knew the promises of God and operated everything according to the promises of God. Last week I talked about how that, you know, I mean, you first to progress by faith. To progress, you know, in life you have to progress by faith. And first thing that you need to first do is, you know, I mean, to know the word. There's a message, the word of faith. And from there, there is a walk of faith. Then you have the witness of faith. It's exactly the same thing. He had put everything in place and told them, he says, do it the second time. And he did it the second time and said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And let's, let's read on. You understood the promise. Verse 35. 
It says, and the water ran about the altar and it filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering. You can put it up again. At the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. No, no, let me say something to you. Though he understood the promises of God, he had done everything, he had, he had everything according to the promises of God. Now, the principles of God's word is important as well. You might do everything if you don't engage the principle. If I believe so much that if Elijah had done this sacrifice in the morning, the fire would not have fallen. That's why he told them to do it first. It was when it was at the time of the evening sacrifice, he stopped them. Why? Because he knows there's a time of evening sacrifice that the fire of God will come down. I haven't put everything in place. A lot of us have put everything in place in our life, but we don't engage God's principle to get that result. A lot of us have fasted. We have prayed. We have sown seed, given our tithe and all that. You know, that's just one bit about it. There's a principle of God. The Bible says, it will bless the works of your hand. If you don't have the work for him to bless, you won't see anything. And so he knew. So he waited for the time of the evening sacrifice that the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham. This, this prayer, you can pray it. I prayed it. It's not up to 20 seconds. This is Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel. Let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. And he just prayed the prayer. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their heart back again. You know, he engaged the, the principles he saw in the promises of God's word. And now what happened? There was a performance. There was a performance. And the Bible says, then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed burnt sacrifice and the wood, wet wood, and the stones, and the dust, and lick up the what all hindrances that would have stopped the performance. That fire came and licked it up. When God gives you a miracle, when it, it comes from God, when you understand the realm, he understood that realm. And he understood that there were forces that were at play. He knew. And so all he did was to know how to engage these different forces. When you read scriptures, you understand this. You understand. There, see, there are different forces and there are ways that you can get them to operate on your behalf. There are different forces. When God told Moses, he told um, uh, uh, Moses to meet with Pharaoh. Moses did a lot of miracles. And the Egyptians, they understood that invisible realm and they did. But they got to a place they couldn't do some kind of miracles. And when God said, okay, yeah, I have my joker. Make this sacrifice. And when he did, Egypt could not hold them. There's some things that you need. When you understand, there's some things going on in your life that you need to engage the realm of the invisible the right way. When your eyes are open, and that's my prayer for you, that your eyes will be open. I want you to stand up on your feet. You know, that your eyes will be open to see this realm. And know how to engage this invisible realm so that you can get physical manifestations, that you can get the results that you, you know, a lot of us are believing God for one thing or the other, but we have not learned how to engage this realm. You know, you think things don't happen by accident. Everything that the devil does is for a reason. And a lot of us fight the physical instead of fighting the, in the spiritual. Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not, they are not physical, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You need to learn to engage. Whether it is in your marriage, there are times the things that happen in your marriage is not because your wife, I mean, is stubborn or I mean, it's, it lacks understanding or because your husband is this, is this way or is that way. It's just because there are some spiritual orchestrations that's what forced to not know how to engage. You don't know how to engage. There was, there was a war one, once in Israel and you know the Bible talked about how the, the armies of Israel were advancing. And a Gentile king, he looked around and said, what can I do? And he made a human sacrifice. And the Bible said there was an indignation. 
spiritually you probably won't even understand why how did this happen Moses you know was and the children of Israel were fighting the Amalekites and he was on, on the hill with his hand lifted up and the children of Israel were winning how what what strategy is that what what strategy is that the most of science know they know that and the minute his hand was going down they were losing some spiritual principle that you cannot understand. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says it. It says the things of the Spirit cannot be understood, you know, by carnal men. It says, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually descent. I want to just go ahead and just pray in the Holy Ghost for a few minutes, just pray in the Holy Ghost. For some few minutes and tell him to open your eyes to, to be able to engage the spiritual differently more you have been saying you've been there at that mountain for so long and nothing is happening nothing is happening you know you need to learn how to engage that realm for you to begin to get results you need to learn how to engage that realm Marco Liarom the sun tagira barom shata galira da grom the lom shadira da man the sun to greater liga senta gaida go shadira leader grom the sun to yonder liga galom the lom shade ya did a negation another in a case in the litigation they ya to shadida go shadia da on shadada in a grom the santa gaida com the liga santa yadida in a grom the santa da com the lison to your own sha in a grom the sun to long shadida da da gaya in a grom the long santa yida da Creda Balom the Santaya, Ido Rom the Lison the Yanda Lison Tayondaga, Ido Rom the Ligas on the Yadagasan or Osaya, Ido Rom the Santa Lina Losa, the Yadine is on the Yadagasan or the Santa Hida Satiano, Ida Creda Lom the Santa Barosa, a Kong Satalia Rosa, a leader of Rom the Santa Hida Bas. Hallelujah. Romans 1 verse 20 says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clear, they are revealed. Being understood by the things that are made, when you look at the things that are seen, you will understand the invisible, you know, things of God. Even his eternal power and Godhead, so that you are without excuse. You see, there's no excuse for whatever it is you're going through, overcoming you prevailing over you there's no excuse Bible says you are because the invisible things of God Bible says they are clearly seen they have been made manifest you're going to pray a prayer just in a minute or two Father open my eyes to see the invisible that is where your faith is based Bible says Moses he saw the invisible that's why he had confidence he saw the invisible open my eyes to see I mean, that will change a lot about your life, will change a lot about a lot of things. If you can see it, you can receive it. Oh, Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, we give you thanks. Because we know we have power as you have given us to control things from the realm of the invisible. To control, Father God, through prayers. You're giving us prayers as a weapon, as a device, as the remote control to control things from that realm. Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, I pray that you open the eyes of your children from this minute going forward, that they can see clearly and that they begin to control things from the realm of the invisible. For your word says, the things that are seen are temporal. They are subject to change, but the things that are not seen are eternal that they begin to change the things that are seen by the things that are not seen. 
and that your name alone will be glorified. In Jesus' name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Yeah.